Hi everyone, my name is Heather White and welcome to this series called, series called Journey to the Boardroom. For most of you who've actually already seen other uh, conversations that we've had with, with other highly experienced non-execs and chairs, you'll know um, from this series that my aim is to make sure that you get this really useful, pragmatic insights as to how people have created their own journeys and what they're doing next to continue that journey as well. The business I run is called Boardroom Ready, and the whole aim of that is to help people with no non-exec experience, board experience, to actually gain the board experience they need to help them with their future careers. So if that's what you're looking to do over the years to come, you need to get some board experience, come and let me come and have a chat with me and then I can perhaps sort of help you in where you want to go. Now, I'm really excited to introduce you to our um, to Warwick, actually, who's, who has volunteered very kindly to give up his time to talk to us today about his own journey. So let me first of all introduce, um, do a bit of blurb around Warwick so you know who he is and, uh, and what he's about. And I'm actually going to read this out because there's so much information here. I want to make sure I get this right. So Warwick Nash is expertise is in sales and marketing, working in retail, consultancy, agencies and travel. Well, in actual fact, actually, Warwick's worked across quite a few different industries, so he's got this wealth of background and knowledge as well. His expertise also goes into private equity, which I think is a really interesting area. Um, and he's also worked in a private equity firm as well, which was Phoenix Equity Partners. So not only has he worked with private equities, he's worked in private equity. Warwick's background starts off with McKinsey's, WPP, Diageo, Adeco, uh, to name but, it's, but a few different organisations he's actually worked with. So you can see where this is going. Some lovely layers building up here. His first role um, as a non-exec was in 2009 with the Riviera Travel Group. Uh, and then since then, he's held a number of different NED roles as well. Currently, Warwick is the chairman of the Chemistry Group, which is another privately backed professional services firm and continues to offer some marketing consultancy services whilst building his MED portfolio. So as you can see, Warwick's got this fantastic experience and expertise and knowledge and insights, which he's very willing to get and sort of share with us all. So I want to kick off with Warwick. Thank you very much indeed for coming along. And I want to kick off with my first question, which is, how did your, your journey to the boardroom start? You know, what triggered this opportunity and how did you hear about it? Over to you. Okay. Uh, well, th thanks, Heather, and uh, great to great to talk today. Um, my first private equity experiences, uh, sorry, my first non-exec experiences was when I was working in a private equity firm, and it's quite typical for a private equity firm once they've made an investment to appoint an, one or two non-exec directors to the boards of the portfolio companies. And um, so I did quite a bit of that um, while I was at Phoenix Equity Partners, and then um, subsequently for the last three or four years, I've been doing it. Um, on my own account, so I've got my own book of uh, book of business and non-exec and chair roles um, for, for myself. Okay, so you were working with Phoenix, and Phoenix then turned around and sort of said, "Right, you know, we we want to get some non-execs onto this particular board that we've backed that we're supporting," and that's how your non-exec career sort of started. That that's correct. So it's a very it was a, it was actually a very easy transition. It was it was my day job um, was to be a non-exec director director on behalf of Phoenix in the in a number of the companies that they'd invested in. Right. OK. OK. And then so the bit I always find interesting is that when you're working in a firm, I mean, this is interesting that you worked in the private. So you were actually employed by the private equity business, were you? That's you're correct. Yeah. So yeah. I was a member of I was a member of staff and they would they would appoint um, okay. members of staff to represent them on on the, the businesses that they'd invested in. OK, so that makes it interesting then, because when you work with a private equity business, how do you then, if you like, make the transition, if that's the right word, it might not be the right word, actually, in this case, from working in the business, the firm, to then being on the board? Because obviously you're there to represent the interest of the private equity business who's backed them. So is there a, a difference, is there a different shape to the way that you operate when you're sitting on the board to when you're actually working in the firm itself? Um. I would say mostly not um, that actually if you're a, a non-executive director um, working with a management team to help the, them uh, enable the business to be successful, then generally it doesn't matter um, whether you're employed by a, 
by an investor or you're, or you're independent of the investor. And I would say the one exception to that was, is when the business um, is experiencing a period of distress. Um, and then you absolutely have to understand your fiduciary responsibilities or statutory responsibilities as a director and make sure that you're understanding that your um, responsibilities are to protect the interests of all the creditors and not just the investor that you happen to be um, appointed by. And so in those, that's a very special situation where the, where the, um, where the, where the alignment may disconnect. And, and it, in, in those cases, you have to be very careful that you're, you're doing the right thing for the company overall, um, as opposed to just the investor. And how did you find your experience, your very first experience being on a board? How did that go for you? Did you, you know, what did you get from that experience? Um, well, it, my experience at Phoenix actually was really varied and I worked in um, as a non-exec on a, a variety of businesses um, that perform very differently. Mm. Um, and I guess that's one of the interesting um, points about being, an, being a plural non-exec director is that you can be involved in situations that are so different. In some cases, you know, the business is doing well, the management team are great, uh, the board is working really well everybody's happy um, and that doesn't always happen that there can be situations where the business isn't performing or you've got issues or problems with individual members of the management team or the board is is not operating effectively mm. um, so I guess my my experiences were very varied um, and that that's one of the things that makes it such a great job I can, I can imagine actually and is that and is that what then triggered you to eventually then want to go plural because of all of this different experience that you've got working on all of these different boards with when you were at Phoenix? Yes, indeed. I mean, I, I, I got to a point in my career where I just knew this was a natural progression. I I'd, I'd had a, a number of executive roles um, as MD and CEO of different businesses, and um, it just felt that this was a very natural progression for me to um, establish a portfolio of, of businesses that I'm supporting on a, on a more of a part-time basis than having one job that I do full-time. Yeah, absolutely. And I, and I one of one of the things that I hear a lot of when people have this plural lifestyle, when they get it going, um, because obviously there's always that tricky part on how do you get it going, which we'll come back to actually. Um, but when you start talking to people who've got this plural lifestyle, is the uh, the energy that comes from the variety and the differences uh, that you experience as a result of that. I mean, it must be fantastic to have you know, sort of a number of different boards and they're all slightly different, albeit there must be similarities, but there must be lots of differences that makes yeah. the job so worthwhile doing, I'd have thought. No, indeed, indeed. At a, at a um, at one level, all businesses are the same and that they, the challenge is to figure out what your product or service is that meets a need um, and to deliver it to your target consumer or target customer really well and to have a great team that can do that so all businesses are generically the same but every single business is entirely unique in that yeah. uh, the issues their competitors the customers their staff the organization who their investors are every, every situation is different yeah um, absolutely i can imagine at, at, and at the same time they're all the same yeah <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. And I think that's a bit that makes it interesting because you, you would only know that once you've done several boards. Um, but when people are first starting out, that um, that first board that they go on to, um, for many, it must go, well, this is where the board is then. And then yes. they get to the next one and go, oh, well, maybe it's not the same. <laughs> yeah, no, indeed, indeed, indeed. And so exactly then at right. what point then did you then decide that you want to then go plural? What was the what was the trigger for you to actually go plural then? Um, I guess, um, in a way, I was plural already when I was working at Phoenix, and that I was working. You know, part of my job was to work across the portfolio as a as an investor director. Um, so I guess the evolution from doing that on a, you know, as it being part of my job to being my full time job was actually a relatively easy decision to make once I reflected on the parts of my job that I enjoyed the most and that I thought I was. I was best at it was it was quite obvious to me that this was the the right path for me personally yeah and so then you then decide you want to take this sort of plural lifestyle now did you then plan it in advance or was this something you went okay i stopped working with phoenix and now i'm going to start this part how did how did that transition happen for you um i i planned it and um i had a role lined up um 
the, the, for, for me to take on um, as I as I exited Phoenix. So I, I didn't have a period where I was, um, you know, entirely not without without a non-exec role. So I transitioned very very smoothly as it happens um, into a into a non-exec role. My first one um, outside of Phoenix a couple of years ago. So then, if you reflect then on your own career, and you must have spoken to a lot of people who want to become, who want to go plural, mm. um, is there any particular advice that you would say, because I mean, you obviously were in a, uh, you had a bit of a unique situation here where you've got, therefore, you, you've worked in private equity, which a lot of people want to get into, um, mm. you've sat on a number of different boards, you had that sort of lifestyle almost, you had mm -hmm. something set up, but there's lots of people who don't have that slightly more easier route into the plural lifestyle. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Anything that you would say to other people who are thinking about doing this? What 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 advice would you give them? Um, I guess a couple of things um, come to mind. The first is um, spend some time thinking about whether it's really really what you want to do, as opposed to something that superficially um, appears attractive. And by that I mean, in my experience, the most successful non-exec directors have a certain personality profile. Um, meaning that they enjoy helping other people be successful. They don't need to be in the spotlight. Their way of working with, an, with a, ex, a chief executive and his or her management team is very much uh, a consulting, mentoring, coaching relationship where you can suggest ideas, but guide people and, and listen to what they're, um, what they're saying and what their issues are. And your, your job is is not to direct and for a lot of people in executive roles um, that transition from executive to non-executive is really difficult mm -hmm. and frankly for a lot of people it just doesn't suit their personality mm -hmm. but you've got to be have you've got to have some, you've got to be the sort of person that genuinely um, gets pleasure um, and fulfillment and satisfaction out of um, helping somebody else be successful rather than being the person that's creating um, and achieving the success um, in their own right so the first 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 suggestion would be really to check this this is genuinely um the right thing um for you to but do how would, but how would you go about checking that out because i mean it's a great it's a great comment i mean i absolutely love that um but how would somebody who let's say for example i but um i don't know they're a functional head of a working in a large organization um they've someone else has cut around and said to them, you know you'd make a, a great non-exec that's how so often the conversation starts you'd be a good non-exec yeah. And then all of a sudden they have to go and explore this whole bit. And I'm with you 100% because I, I think there are certain personalities where um, the need for control is too great for them to make the right transition into the influencing versus the doing side of it. The yeah, People get their energy, don't they, from different places, you know, their sense of um, Indeed. who yeah. they are from different places. So I agree with that. But how would you go about finding out if you're the right type or not what would you mm. what would you think on that? Well, I, I think I, I think a couple of things for me um, proved useful um, the first is to do a, a, a process of self-reflection um, looking at my entire career um, every, every single role that I've done during my career and to try and identify what were the things that I really enjoyed most about that particular job and what are the things that either I found difficult and didn't enjoy or frustrating or whatever else. And if you did that over a 20 or 30 year career and you think about all the different um, positions that you've had and the, and the projects or tasks that you've done or achievements that you've done or secondments, all those things that you've done over your career um, and why you chose to do them and what you got out of them, et cetera, et cetera, you can, pick, you can, you can develop quite a rich um, view of what you are as a person. Um, and the sorts of things that do help you, uh, do motivate you and help you be successful. Obviously, it requires you to be honest with yourself about the things that you were good at and the things you enjoyed and the things that you weren't good at or frustrated by. Um, and, you know, people are capable of fooling themselves. So um, there is a little bit of, uh, there is a big need to be honest with yourself. Um, and the second obvious, the obvious, um, uh, additional idea would be to ask other people so co-workers people that you've had as bosses people that you've had as um, people that are reported to you peers in the past um, particularly people that you trust will give you really the truth mm. um, and mm. not not 
not um, hold back from giving you the truth for fear of upsetting you or offending you or damaging the relationship, whatever else. So it's got a, you know, it's got to be a, a particular, um, very open conversation to have. But if you if you can do that and um, get get good feedback from other people and be honest with yourself about the things that you've um, the, the things you found most um, rewarding in your career, then that will be a good clue as to whether or not going down a portfolio non-exec role is, is the right path for you versus um, any of the other choices that you might have. Yeah, it's interesting you say that because, um, you know, part of our role is actually to put people onto a commercial board 12 months as a board observer or quasi net. And, um, and the idea is that they gain board experience to help them with future roles. But part of that actually is also to determine whether or not this is the right thing for them. them. And it's been fascinating to see how the executives respond to this very different world. Um, it demystifies it for a start anyway. Mm. Um, and we have had a couple of people who've gone through the process and come out at the end saying, absolutely not for me. Had a great experience, really enjoyed mm. it, learned a lot. But they realised that that type of way of, of um, influencing was just not where they were at. So I think you're 100% right, actually. Yeah. And some of this then leads itself to, well, if you go through the self-reflection, if you go and ask other people, uh, where else could they go and get some insights to help them make that assessment of themselves? I mean, we do this you know, we do this unique program, but there are other ways, aren't there, where people can go and get board experience, but without going down the full Monty of being a non-exec. So is yeah. there anything that you would suggest that people also look at to go and gain some experiences to get the insights? For, for sure. Um, I mean, I think it's quite, um, it's quite unhelpful to, to think of the choice as being quite binary between I'm an executive or I'm a non-executive. Um, and think that those are two separate things. Actually, you can get a lot of non-executive experience in a in a full-time executive role if you if you you know volunteer for you know projects within your organisation. So there may be um, a big transformation project or a big IT project of some kind that needs a steering group, and you could volunteer and you could be a member of the steering group. And in 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 that case, you are your job is to oversee the delivery of a project via a full-time project team your job is not to deliver the project it's to oversee and provide governance um, to the project team so even within a full-time um, executive role there are opportunities for people to get non-executive experience and then obviously alongside a full-time role if if you're um if you can agree with your employer your line manager um you could take on something outside of your your full-time role so that might be um, a, a commercial non-executive role or it might be something um, like a, a charity that you're um, that you're committed to become a trustee or um, uh, some kind of local um, local service that you're you're particularly you know school governor those sorts of things where you can just get you just get used to just get the practice of attending board meetings where you're um, you're you're non-executive rather than executive and you just get that experience over a period of time doing doing something that might not be related at all to where you want to go but just gives you an opportunity to get that kind of experience 